Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Photo, episode number 43, recorded on February 7th, 2012. Robbie Cavanaugh. Twit Photo is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off your new account for six months, go to Squarespace.com and use the offer code TWITPHOTO2. And by Gazelle, the easy way to sell or recycle your used electronic gadgets from your home or office. Don't just sell it, gazelle it. Gazelle your used gadgets today at gazelle.com. It's time for Twit Photo and this special show. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Thank you for joining us. This is the show where we talk about photography, about great photographers, about their art, their process, the technology that they use. And it's a great way to learn, but also just to kind of look at beautiful pictures. Speaking of beautiful pictures, here's Catherine Hall, our host, CatherineHall.net. Hi. We're going to Norway. Mm. Because we have a very special episode. Yes, we do. And we are going to Norway. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, I think Mikkel Oland is taking you and me to Nord- the Nordic Light Festival end of March, or er, end of April. Yes. And uh, we're going to do a special twit photo from there we're using taking it 5Ds. International. We're going to shoot it with 5Ds. Leah's going to teach me how to shoot video. I assumed that you knew how to use the video, and no. you don't ever shoot video. I've done it, but I'm not a seasoned pro. Well, you, but you are, it's the same thing. It's just pictures that move. So we'll get. Your compositional eye and your lighting eye. Leo, you're going to teach me. And then I'll press record and we'll record There it. we go. It'll be easy. But it'll be a lot of fun. And we're going to see some beautiful things, including I'm hoping to go to Mikkel Olin's family manse in That's Telemark. That's what I so, go. Yeah, there's going to be so many things to see. So that and will be in April. If uh, anyone's from that area, I want to shoot, I want to photograph people out there. I want to go be on a little photo sons. adventure. Yeah. So that would be fun. Suggestions. Would be great because that's what you're so good at. Is yeah. those, those I want to go. It's time for me to get out and do some personal work. Catherine uh, actually uh, does blog at catherinehall.net slash blog, and every week does a photo of the week. I love this. Smart props help your models pop. Julia Morgan Ballroom, beautiful place. I love the lorgnette. Did you know that that's what that's called? No, I didn't. That, know that. those binoculars, they're called lorgnettes. Lorgnettes. And the pearls, fantastic. Yeah. So it's just talking about how a photograph of a beautiful woman, just beautiful. Yeah, it's nice. It looks good. But if there's not a story, if there's not content, if there's something not something there that provokes thought, then it's sort of you'll there's forget the- it. So there's a story. She's looking yeah. at something. It's yeah. There's definitely it's something engaging. It's, yeah. You want to know what she's looking at? There's a ball going you. on. Or, and the, yeah. also the great thing about props too is it really gives. If you don't have a model that's as experienced, it gives them something to kind of play with and allows right. them to be more comfortable. So I always suggest when you're shooting people that aren't normally in front of the camera, give them something to play with, give them something to hold on to, and something that fits the shot if you will. You know, that's actually true uh, in acting as well. When I was studying acting, they would often give you a prop like an apple, something to eat, something to hold, something to do that would kind of take your focus off yourself and your performance. You're eating an apple and and actually people can become much more natural. Props, same thing. It's just... It's the same thing. It gives you something to do so you're not thinking about where my hands are. It takes the edge off. Well, exactly. For so that, where's my prop for we've the show? Got, I've got some whiskey, I think, over in there. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm nervous uh, for today because we have our winner. We have our winner. From the, the guest Twit quest. It's a big photo day. guest quest, yeah. And I also want to thank, we have a couple prizes for our winner today that he didn't know about. So oh. this is exciting that I wanted to thank Nick Software, Low Pro, and Backlick Bots for those, which Great. we will get into later in the Great. show. And um, we're going to do portfolio critiques today. We have Zach and Tamara here, which is going to be... Two of our judges. Two of our judges. Zach Arias and uh, Tamara Lackey. Yeah. Who's been on the show before. Who's been on the show. Everyone knows Zach from his... Well, everyone just knows Zach. <laughs> but he also has his one light workshops. And, and then Tamara from Redefine. And a little buzzy. A little... Oh. There she is. <laughs> and she's poking Zach. Stop poking she's him. Po- she's poking Zach. By the way, Tamara, I just want to say I've been really enjoying all your Redefine episodes. And they're, they're very inspirational. So if anyone hasn't seen them, Redefine.com, you should check them out. And Redefine show. Thank you very much. And Zach, I hear you just built a new studio. 
Yes. Well, I didn't build it, but I rented the key to the front door. Well, there you um, go. So, yeah. <laughs> well, you're creating a new space, if you will. Yes. And are in you gonna, a new space. Are you going to have your workshops there, or is it for shooting? What's the... It's mainly for shooting. I'm kind of taking a break on workshops. I have some workshops coming up this year, but um, I'm trying to uh, bring that schedule down. Uh, but we will be having an event, so anyone in Atlanta... Um, our next one is Saturday the 18th. We're having a live critique night. Uh, so bring a chair, bring a beer, and bring your work, and bring a box of tissues. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so does anyone want to get Robbie some tissues for today? There's no well, crying in okay. photography. Well, I need some. Robbie Cavanaugh is here. No, no, Robbie won't. I have to say, I want to commend Robbie really quick for, I, we wrote him an email saying, because it's kind of scary to have your work critiqued live. And yeah. it takes some balls. And I want to say, you and Helen both stood up to the plate. And I want to commend you for that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm totally so, up for learning new things. So, so feel free to tear it apart. So it'll make me better. So, yeah. Robbie, you're not a, are you a pro now? You're, you were just out of school when, when you applied, right? Yeah. I mean, I started photography when I was in school. Yeah. Um, I actually just recently graduated this last quarter. Great. Congratulations. So, That's you. great. So, this is where What's the, hate meter, the uh, hate meter design. goes up. Graphic designer. Yes. <laughs> All right. So good. So young. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. actually, speaking of hate, you actually used to hate photography. Yes, that's very Explain. true. Um, at the time in high school, I was more interested in doing like drawings and, and painting and things like that. I was definitely more interested in the traditional arts. Um, so with photographers, I felt, well, if you have a camera and you take a picture of something, um, it's easy to say that's art and call yourself an artist. So I was kind of always upset with that because I felt like as a traditional artist, I had to work so much harder to have it be considered art. But with a camera, you just take a picture and then... It's oh, too easy? Is that what you're that's saying? That's what I felt. That's yes, what you that's thought. Easy. You're going to hear from Zach Arias in a moment. Now what do you think? <laughs> you, sorry, Zach. Now, no, yeah, now, now I'll make you cry. I'm a new man. I'm a new man. <laughs> you're asking for trouble. I'm just saying. So now what do you think? Now I think it's... It's freaking the, hard, isn't it? It's, well, yeah. <laughs> I think it's one of the, you know, the greatest forms of art there is, to be honest. Why? I, I, there's a lot of qualities and a lot of aspects that photography have that are just very different. I mean, it's very difficult to take something that looks real to everyone and say, this is what art is. Because everyone sees it on a normal basis. With drawing, you can, you can create your own. You can manipulate. Yeah. You can say, this is art for being art. But with photography, it's also real. To say it's art is difficult. And to make it art is harder. Yeah. Well, I think there's no question, and I know our judges felt this way when they looked at your portfolio, that there is a considerable amount of art uh, in your work. In fact, some of your work in the fine art photography section is clearly uh, painting kind of you know yeah. it's uh it's it's phantasmagorical right <laughs> thank you yeah <laughs> so conceptually how are you coming up with these ideas um it's a it's a huge process so um conceptually i may i feel like there's different ways to tell a story there's many different ways to tell the same story so i if i have uh, an idea that i want to depict i think of different ways i can conceptually make it interesting but it's something that's still personal to me that i would like to share with the world so it's it's definitely a long process of sketching things out. I make a lot of thumbnails. I actually brought some thumbnails. Yeah, so I'd like to see this. Guys. What's a thumbnail? Like, you know, you draw it all out. So I'll create... A sketch? Like, yeah, oh yeah. I so, you, so we've talked before about kind of pre-visualization and planning your photos. So you actually will this sketch these out. This is one of out. the things this, that this the pros... Like hieroglyphics. Uh, the, you cannot probably understand, uh, understand this. Here's just, the camera right, right here. There. But... Um, yeah, it's just hmm. like notes, and it's just kind of how um, I may write sayings down that I'm passionate about, and then I take those sayings and create word bubbles and things like that. So I definitely, I start this way. You can... That's interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. <laughs> so you come, where, how you come up, I mean, your ideas are obviously very, they're not yeah, normal. No, yeah, they're very different. Yeah, so how do you know which ones to pursue, and how do you come up with them in the first place? Um, that's always very difficult because it's kind of like getting inspiration and as a photographer getting inspiration is, can be anywhere and it's always you know difficult to have um, so I'll just go towards things that I like to you know talk about so like how I see things and the things that are personal to me and I pursue it that way and then I think well this would be interesting a way to conceptualize it so I'll use this prop and things like that I kind of tell stories with my work 
So it's always interesting. Always interesting. So, so let me ask uh, Zach and uh, Tamara what it was when you looked at uh, Robbie's portfolio versus, I mean, we had how many entries? A hundred, more than a hundred. Oh, no, it, it was way more it, than a hundred. You paired it down. I think it was like 300 or something. Yeah, and you paired it down before they had to look at it. I can't I remember. I don't quote me. But yeah, we got it. We definitely paired it down. So there, um, there was quite a bit of stuff to look he at. he was my favorite from the get-go. I'm honored. And I, I actually, <laughs> I, I felt kind, kind of... Um, when I saw that you were the winner, it made me feel like, okay, well, maybe I do know what I'm doing when I'm judging, if that's what, <laughs> <laughs> that's what everyone else picks. <laughs> Zach, Zach uh, let me ask you, uh, 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 what, was there something that stood out for you? Uh, are you really unhappy that Robbie won? <laughs> <laughs> are you going to make me cry right now? No. <laughs> Where's my um, tissues? <laughs> you know, the list I got, I think I think I got a pared down list of, what, 40 or 50 photographers um, by the time I, I, I got to see the entries. Um, and Robbie, your work just stood out immediately, and I said, "Okay, I already have my number one." Because uh, was there a first, second, third, and honorable mentions, or something like that? But I already found my first. Interesting. Interesting. And I hit your work. That's crazy. Um, and anything else had to beat that. So I immediately took yours and said, "Okay, I renamed it first. Wow. Um, and then I figured something had to beat that. The reason. Uh, that I did so was because it was consistent. It, it was a, you know, the, the contest said the hottest emerging photographers. It wasn't, you know, I, I mean, if you're going to be a hot emerging photographer, if you're going to be young and get going in this industry, then you've got, you've got to like, you got to come out with something interesting that, that makes us all want to stop and see. And what I saw a lot in the other work was, yeah, okay, I've seen that, yeah, I've seen that, I've seen that, and I've seen that, and I've seen that. And, and Robbie, your, your work is conceptual, and I'm sure we could all name 10 other conceptual photographers that, oh, maybe this reminds me of so-and-so, or this reminds me of so-and-so, but everything we do is derivative off of everything that's been done before. Well, especially when so, you're young. Yeah, that's how you start, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's how yeah. you have and to I'm, start, yeah. I'm definitely not going to walk, but your work is consistent. Um and fascinating. And, I have to say, it grabs you. Yeah, you. it makes me stop and look and think. Um, and so, yeah, so it definitely was was number one, and nothing else really touched it in the rest of the uh, the contest of what I saw. Wow, I'm honored. What a thing to hear. Tamara, your thoughts when you first saw Robbie Stewart? Yeah, I mean, I'd agree with Zach. A lot of what we're looking for, I think, um, the word I kept thinking is impact. Mm. Like, what stood out, what hit me right away. And um, that is how this work stood out. Also top of my list. And um, a lot of times you do see photos that make you stop and think and they do have that impact, but then you're immediately disappointed because the technicals aren't there. Uh -huh. You're like, oh, I love the concept, but why, why did right. they blow that whole part out? Or, or right. why do I have no shadow? You know, whatever the deal may be. Um, and so what I loved is that I saw um, something different and striking and interesting and um, and then I also saw the work to back it up in terms of it was presented really well. Technically proficient. Thank you so yes, much. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Now, yeah. So just enjoy this now, Robbie. It's going to get bad. So <laughs> just, just, just well, the thing but too. Then, but then I thought, no. <laughs> well, the interesting thing too, going through all the portfolios, because we did a, um, we couldn't give the judges everything because it would right. just be overwhelming. So we had to narrow it down. And the frustrating thing is you start sometimes find work where the first maybe 10 images were really strong, 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 and then it just nosedived. Right. And you think, well, yeah. why'd you just, less is more, you right. know? Why like, even include there it? Were, yeah. There yeah. were portfolios that I just threw out of the, you know, running because of one single image. Mm, hey, this uh, isn't bad. This is not bad. What the hell is this doing here? Like, <laughs> did you take this out? Like, well, this, that's a valuable. This is such a bad photo. I'm not even going to consider the rest of the portfolio. That's a valuable um, <laughs> point to make for anybody who's using their portfolio for any reason, to get a job, to go to school or whatever. Only your very best stuff. And would you suggest, Zach, that he go to other people before he sh submits it to find out, is this as good as I think it is? Because I'm sure the people included those photos you didn't like thought they were good photos. They wouldn't have put them in. Right. Uh, I don't, you know, it's hard. A, it's subjective. B... Like, let's say you're a landscape photographer and you bring your work to me, who I'm a portrait photographer. Right. I may go, wow, this is great. And then you show it to someone who, like, I don't know, Moose Peterson, who's going to tear it all apart because, you know, he's, well, at 3.30 in the morning on the coldest, 
morning of the year, I hiked out to your cemetery, you know, like, and has some picture to show you that rocks your world. And right. So, yes, you need feedback, but always look up the food chain from wherever you are. Don't. Yes. It's typically your, your friends and your family who pat you on the back and go, wow, your work is great. You should be a photographer. And you start to pursue it. You know you're becoming a better photographer when those same friends and family no longer like your work. Um, <laughs> you know, why are you chopping the head off? Why aren't they in the middle? Uh, <laughs> what are these paper airplanes all over there? I don't understand that. Couldn't you just take a nice picture? Actually, speaking of understanding, his he comes from a family of doctors and lawyers. Yeah, like He's my, a black sheep. my extended family is, you know, all that. And it's just like, I am totally the black sheep. Like people, my parents don't really understand what I do, but they support me. Of do course. they look at it and, re- and realize how good it is? I mean, can they tell? No, they, they look don't. at it and wonder what's wrong with me. <laughs> really? They're like, why, why is that why umbrella on this? fire? Yeah. I don't understand. Why do you need to do this exact yeah. thing? Like, isn't that dangerous? Why do you have to do that? <laughs> And you'll never make a living. And I'm sure every professional in this room heard that at one point, which is, you'll never make a living. Oh, I have to do it. It's something I have to do. May I I say, uh, Robbie's parents, if you're watching this, he's really talented. He's really good. Um, If if he's just getting started at this with a graphic design background and photography, if he applies himself and uh, hustles, he can do really well with him, you know, his himself. He could make a good life. Um, I'm, you know, I have an associate degree at best, and that took me like six years to get. And I have uh, four kids at home and a wife, and I support them with a camera, so it can be done. That's awesome. So, what yeah. do you mean by hustle, Zach? Hustle, like it's not going to come to you. Yeah. Um, you, you have can to work Build hard. your website and get all your SEO all you want, and put all those happy blog titles of ooh fun family portrait so and so town so and so state so and so everything else but you know you've got to go hustle to work and yeah. um, you definitely have a commercial appeal to your work and, and how important how important is that I don't you know I, but uh, it's not I guess and I, I don't know I mean I'm a editorial commercial photographer so to me it's important right to other people it doesn't matter to a fine art photographer they don't give a damn about yeah dn arbus probably wasn't thinking about whether she'd no, get in life in magazine. fact if you were to say oh you have a commercial appeal to your work they'd probably you know right. curse you right um but there is a lot of uh there are some bridges being built between fine art and commercial world now and robbie i see on your your site you do you know portraits and and weddings right. and you gotta make um, a living i, <laughs> gotta I make would, a living. I, I would encourage you to bring more of your personal fine artwork into the weddings, oh, in, interesting. to your portraiture, That's great so advice. that you stand out. Because if you go shoot all the same crap that you know me and Tamara shoot, then then <laughs> we're you know whatever. Like Th- that job is already are, taken. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's harder to get there. We, we are already filling the world with crap. The, the, <laughs> no, 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 no. But but you don't want to look. You, Robbie, run. No. <laughs> Let me. Can, can I ask a little bit about your wor- your work, Robbie? Yeah, uh, uh, now, how much of it is Photoshop? How much of it is is mo- modified after the fact? Is this uh, all in the camera? Um, that's tell, actually tell me a about tip you. that I do talk about later. Okay, uh, you could you could telegraph okay. a little bit. I believe foreshadow. Photoshop should be used to just enhance. Not so create. you're you're not when you do these, you're not painting these. These are not these I, are photographs. I try my best to get everything in shot, and if I do, it may be a combination of one exposure, much like an HDR, into one image. But right. I work very hard. Very, very hard getting everything in so, shot. And, and I say that because the, ch- the chat room is saying, oh, this isn't photography. This I is painting. A bunch, yes. But it is it's photography, old. which makes it all the more impressive. <laughs> well, that's like what's with Sue Bryce. Remember how, Tamara, you've had a personal experience with this. Everyone was, she's shooing Sue Bryce saying, oh, she retouches it. They're caricatures. They're not real. And then you find out she's not. Yeah. She's just bringing out. I mean, hair and makeup helps too. Yeah, right. But um, <laughs> I can vouch for that personally. <laughs> but yeah, I hear you. No, I think I think getting cameras a big thing. I personally, um, so the door. Someone behind there holding the door in that shot. We just is that an actual it. door yeah. on the beach there? What's the story? The door's hollow. I bought it from Lowell's, twenty bucks. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So there really is a door on the beach. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And is there somebody behind it holding it up? No, there's a rock behind it. <laughs> you would never know. You're going to get all the inside now, scoop on my Now, how about photos. the birds? Did you know that you were going to get birds? I ha- Birds were definitely there, but I waited for the birds to fly <laughs> into my shot, and then I took it. And then There's a it loaf of bread on the yeah, rock. Yeah, on the yeah. door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, that would be okay. <laughs> nice. But the point is, this is in camera. Now, obviously, yes. there's you're, you're doing desaturation, and there's a vignette, right, and right. you're doing some stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. To give it a different look. But that's fine. I mean, I don't think that anybody would say that that's in any way uh, yeah, cheating. Fabricated. Yeah, like this was shot in a desert, right? <laughs> yeah. That would be cheating. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we added the water, we added the sky, we yeah. added the birds, and we added the door. And I feel a lot of photographers that kind of are similar to my work, conceptual work, they rely on that. And I think it's kind of lazy photography in a way because they'll take a picture of mountains, they'll take a picture of a model, and they'll take a picture of a lake, and they put it all into one photo and say it's photography. And I think they really miss the point, right. which is photography is capturing something in, like, in shot, in motion. That's the point of photography, and I'm really passionate about doing that. Well, if you ever doubted Robbie's energy and his go-getter uh, attitude, I mean, that's, this is a lot of work to, to, to stage and set up and, yeah. and make happen. So you started the 360 Projects, kind of got you into shooting yourself. Explain that yeah, sort of transition. So the, the 365 Day Project is a photo a day, and uh, I got to day 14. I know. <laughs> I gave up every vacant. time. I don't want to see that much <laughs> of me. I get to like day three. Yeah. yeah. It's like, <laughs> I've had it. It turned out I was just too much of a perfectionist, and it just took too much of my time. I would wake up in the morning feeling very pressured to submit another photo of equal or greater quality. Right. Um, I, I just lost sight of why I was doing it in the first place which is just to shoot, just to get used to shooting. But, um, yeah, I didn't have time to call people and be like, hey, can you come down for a photo every day? So I'm guessing that these take more than a day to set up and plan yeah, and I shoot. Yeah, I mean, I kind of write, again, I do the thumbnail thing, and I make sure I have something right. each day. Sometimes I wake up and I don't have anything, but a lot of the photos I take by myself because I don't have time to call someone and bring them in. So I actually use a, um, a wireless remote sensor. Do you have that with you? I do have that with me. I do you want to that. show us? Yes. So, so in contrast to last week, we had David Bergman with his 600 millimeter. Now we're going to the other side of, of what you can do with minimal gear. So this this has been loved. It's it's kind of you know destroyed a little, but it, you just hook it onto your hot shoe, and you just turn it on like. This. And who makes that? Um, Z or Z shoe S shoe? I don't even know. I got it from Amazon. Just put wireless remote sensor in Amazon, <laughs> and you'll get it. It's like 12 bucks really cheap and, uh -huh. and so the idea is you can trigger the shot yes. from a distance now why do you do that i mean you can't you be next to the camera in these no, shots he's in shots i'm usually well when oh, I these are self-portraits yeah, oh. a lot of these are self-portraits when i first started she looks nothing feet. like you that's amazing <laughs> i was wearing a wig Karen, actually you know? <laughs> but um no that's a, that's actually very important and i know I, i'll give you an example is this these these bed pictures with the with the sheets and so forth very hard to pull off um that's you Yes, that's me. How many shots did you take to get that? It's usually around 200. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's a lot of jumping. You must have been exhausted. I sprained my neck falling on the bed. <laughs> oh and what's really funny, you guys get all the inside scoop. I was actually house-sitting. That's not even This isn't even room. your house. Oh, I was in someone God. else's room, and the window light was perfect. I was like, I'm just going to shoot in here. I had my little tripod set up, my little camera, and then I just had the You didn't have additional lights? It was all through the window? It was all through the window. It was all through That's the window. That's one of my favorites. It's and I love how the, the bed sheet is acting as a reflector. <laughs> yeah, isn't yeah. that clever? Well, I, know. It's great. I, I got really lucky with that. And even, you know, I didn't yeah. intend that. That's one of my mistake. favorites. It really is. <laughs> So I had a wireless remote sensor, yep. and I had it set on my camera, and I had it actually in my right hand. I'm holding it. You wouldn't know. But I have the bed sheet pinned to the wall with, against like a chair with a chair, and then I would jump oh, with one wow. sheet in my right hand, twirl it over, pull the other, and then fetal and cannibal. When you were a little kid, did you do a lot of stuff by yourself? <laughs> I guess I was definitely different. I don't know. I was more quiet. I was always interested in the arts. I wasn't into sports. And you know? you're in your room a lot. Most I likely, just, yes. I, I feel like this is what a 10-year-old boy would be doing, <laughs> except that you now have the camera and the, and the art. So it looks professional. And it's a project. <laughs> well, it's just, no, it's the kind of thing. No, in fact, that's praise because it's childlike in its joy and it's pure. It's very pure in this joy of bouncing on the bed and getting the sheets and the thing. And I think that that, to me, it is childlike. Thank you. Thank yeah, you and I don't know. think that that's a, a criticism at all. Thank you. Now, it's Zach's turn. <laughs> do you want to do the critique section? Dramatic lighting. Do you want to do the critique you know, section? Really, I don't have anything really to oh, critique about All this right. body of work. Um, I, I think my one technical critique is the images are all a little flat. They mm. they remind me of bad scans. Um, and I, I want to see the shadows get a little richer and have a little more punch okay. um, to the shadows. And I know it's it's kind of a thing and some people some people there's this whole flat style that's kind of all the rage right now and I cannot wait until it dies a, a nasty death that it needs to die but 
I, so it, that's my one critique. I okay. look at it and I go, oh, I just want to just crunch the shadows a little bit. Um, uh, but I, no, it's it's all very consistent. And, and what I love is it's different. It's completely different than what I do. Um, and there are parts of me that go, man, I wish I could think of this mm. stuff. Like I, I wish I it's very imagine like, had that idea. A lot of imagination, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's great. And Robbie, it's are you going for that flat look, or is this in, is this information that you can use? I mean, yeah. is this something you were trying or to achieve? Just have a bad I mean, monitor. in all honesty, like I'm not. <laughs> okay, you need a better monitor. monitor. <laughs> I was never taught photography. So uh-huh. This is something that I just don't know. I just closely match the images in Photoshop as I see it in my head. So I guess that's why it's consistent. It's, I use the same process every time. Each it's a photo. little dreamlike. Yeah. It's, uh, right. it's almost another... through gauzy, right? Yeah, is that what you're talking about, Zach? Powerful. Is kind of that gauzy, dreamlike? Yeah, just, uh, the, the shadows are just uh, are pushing more towards mid-tones than right. actually <clears throat> You'd like to see more black. So the highlight retention is good and I mean, I, I don't mind the muted, kind of desaturated colors in, in many of them. I, I think it works for this style of work. And uh, exposure is great. Composition is awesome. Your sense of light um, is really nice. It, it looks to be all just natural light, um, nothing artificial in these. And, and it works for this, and it's great. Um, it's, it's just I just would like to see the, the contrast. <laughs> yeah, the thank you some. so much. I totally you know, take that to heart. and. Ray Work DVD says in our chat room, midtones are the new black. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately so. <laughs> yeah, you want that to die. <laughs> and the style I'm talking about is is this taken to the like tenth level. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. To where yeah. where shadows yeah. are almost highlights. Not really, but I'm exaggerating. What were you gonna say, Tamara? Well, yeah, I think the, the it's this low contrast kind of concept that I think looks gorgeous. And one of the things I was going to say, Robbie, uh, piggybacking off of what Zach mentioned about, um, you know, I I actually don't dislike this. I like this low contrast look, but it would be interesting, two things. One, to see um, what uh, your body of work would look like if you had uh, the consistency that you already have in terms of your vision and the way you see things and mix that up with different post-processing styles. Mm. So you don't always have to stick to kind of a low contrast look. It would be interesting to see what it looked like with a very contrasty mm. look or um, some sort of, uh, or the, you know, the opposite way where it's extremely like all darks and just a hint um, or very bright and glowing. And that would be interesting to me to see what you would do with those different styles, knowing what your body of work is already. I'm not saying right. leave it, you're doing great. Um, but your consistency, as, as I see it, is more in your vision. Right, uh, cause exactly. Because it stands apart that way. I, I also wonder, my second question is, how much of this work have you printed? Um, I've sold a couple prints here and there, but um, not so much, really, to be honest. Because uh, well, and, and, one of the things I'd love to see is some of these images big and me, printed. and me too. You get <laughs> such a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would but love it. You, but it, it, and I'm not sure. It doesn't always have to be for sale or for a gallery. I mean, just in terms of your own self improvement. Okay. Um, one of the biggest leaps I took was um, stepping away, step away from the monitor, stepping away from the monitor, and printing big. And you see things that you didn't see before. You see oh, every little yes. element yeah. of um, what doesn't come out. And when you have issues with your dynamic range, and when you see banding that you didn't see on a monitor. Right, I think that's great advice. I yeah, totally do that. definitely. Like, um, that that is crucial. I like I second everything uh, Tamara just said. Like, go make yeah, it's happening again. Or larger. Great. Yeah, so, I totally will. And when I edit my photos, I look at my monitor screen from different angles because sometimes when you go lower, it tends to get your images tend to get darker, and you can see where oh, it gets. That's your- Problem. You're looking at it the wrong. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I look at it from all angles to make sure I don't have any strange like blotting or any just weird texture that I don't want there. But yeah, printing at large, I would love just to see it. it <laughs> and depending on how you're printing and the contrast and all that sort of stuff, it really makes a difference. That's awesome. Yeah. You can see it printing on Epson has the um, the fine art papers like velvet fine art has a lot of texture to yes, it. Yes, that'd be amazing. Really, I would love really to beautiful. do that. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're gonna take a break. This is such great stuff, and I'm learning, and I I think. Robbie uh, is, and uh, yeah, yeah. we thank you for sitting in here for this. And we're so glad we could have you. We're going to come back with more. Tamara Lackey is here, Zach Arias, and, of course, our uh, Twit Photo guest quest winner, Robbie Cavanaugh. We're going to talk about what he, some stuff, too, for him in yeah. just a little bit. But first, uh, let's talk about 
websites. You know, if you're a photographer, it is so important. We talked about it a minute ago to have a website that reflects you, that is your portfolio, that has your style, that is unique. And I think for a lot of photographers, Squarespace is a great solution. It's the hosting, best hosting you can get. This hosting never goes down. It is always available. It's always snappy. You cannot, you know, you cannot slash dot dig or twit a site if it's on squarespace.com. But more than that, you can control your site because you could do it yourself. It's got, it's, in fact, go to squarespace.com and click that green try it free button. You don't need a credit card or anything. You get two weeks of all the Squarespace features, uh, the great integration, the templates, the customization. If you know CSS and JavaScript, of course, the sky's the limit. You could do anything. It is, it is uh, the, very easy to post directly on the Squarespace site or using their Android and iOS apps. You can import and export your site so you're never trapped, but you can also get all your stuff in. It's very affordable, too. The cost of all this software and the hosting, uh, for most people, is around 12 bucks a month. There are different packages. The more you buy, of course, the less it costs. And we're going to give you a special deal, by the way, if you use the offer code TWITPHOTO2. You'll get 15% off your site for the first six months. So six months to really try it. Twit Photo 2. Squarespace is the secret behind exceptional websites. Easy to design, easy to make for anybody. Bloggers, photographers, fine artists. If you go to the example site, you'll also see podcasters. You'll see uh, stores. You'll see all kinds of people. Squarespace.com slash... Oh, I'm using Chrome. Every time I use Chrome, it does this to me. I don't know why. Squarespace.com uh, slash... Uh, and use the offer code. I'm sorry. Twit photo two. But do try it free. You don't need an offer code to try it. And I think you'll like it. Look at the examples, too. There's so many really neat designs. There's a whole whole of photography section in the examples to see what others are doing with a Squarespace. All right. We're going to continue on with our Twit photo guest quest winner, Robbie Cavanaugh. Robbie, the yes. uh, the image of the umbrella on fire. So that was on fire. Yes, it was. Okay. So, so you didn't get many takes on that one. I, oh <laughs> my gosh, that was very scary. Yeah. Or did you have a lot of umbrellas? I did a lot of tests by myself in my backyard to make sure it was safe for my model. So I good. I had I bought like five umbrellas in. Um, what's interesting about umbrellas is they don't actually light on fire; they melt. So what I did was I had to take black construction paper and meld it to the bends of the umbrella. So that's what's actually burning. Ah. You know, this is like the perfect cover image for that story that comes out that people are later like, what the hell is he thinking? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the horrible Fox News headline. Right. Yeah. yeah. Some young upstart. <laughs> yeah. But I like it that he considered the, the model. And uh, the safety of the model. Yeah, I think that's a good sign. A I like it that you put yourself at risk first. I think that's really great. important. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't want, you know, I want her to be, feel comfortable, and that's really important because models are always apprehensive. And is she a professional or a friend? No. Or? no, she is just a friend of a friend. Yeah. So you do you do a lot of gaming. Do you think yes. that the, that influences the sort of fantasy aspect of your work? I'm sure it does. I mean, I've, I've been gaming since I was little. I've, it's always something I've really enjoyed. And I really liked the fantasy aspect of it. Like, I was never into the sports games because it's like, well, you could just go outside and play. Like, why do you need to, I don't know, you should just go outside if you're going to play football. Yeah. But with, I liked video games that were really um, just interesting storylines, just something different. And I like, I, yeah, I could totally see myself, you know, creating work from that. So how do you you're know? Sorry, go ahead, Tamara. You were saying that you, people were always saying go outside and play and you thought... That didn't compare to... Is that what you just said? <laughs> yeah, I'm saying, like, well, why would you want to play a football game on a GameCube if you can go outside and throw it around? And, and do it for understand. real. Yeah. <laughs> What's uh, the... flip side. You're saying the flip side. Yes. <laughs> Got it. Okay, okay, okay. Did you play American McGee's Alice? Because some of your images remind me a little bit of... Uh, oh, oh, you'd love that What's game. your favorite It's game? very beautiful. My favorite game. Starcraft. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I totally play Starcraft. Really? I'm a Starcraft 2 fan, for really? sure. Really? Um, I'm I'm good. I wouldn't say I'm great at it. You know, I just I do it for fun, and that's you need important. something to get it get away from this. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, StarCraft, the Final Fantasy series, video games. Where do you get your inspiration for images like this? These feel very dreamlike. Do you dream these? Um, um I feel like uh, the person that you are now and the person that you were then, like a long time ago. I feel like every person kind of has a timeline of who they are as a person. And during your timeline, you've had moments in your life that may have changed you, 
for the worst or for the better. So like these dividing moments. So I kind of take those moments in my timeline and I like to conceptually photograph them. Oh, how interesting. So, so what moment did this come from? <laughs> this one, right? Yeah. Here? It says in the clouds. <laughs> so um, I, some of my work likes to um, go against the norms of society. So I was always kind of against getting a job and working in a cubicle. Mm -hmm. So my idea for this was to, you know, if I'm going to go to work, I'm going to go to work with my head in the clouds and do something that I'm passionate about doing, which is being creative. Love so it. That's kind of how that photo arrived. And most of my photos have a, a strong concept. Very interesting. Yeah. And you know what? And you're pulling it off technically well. With yeah. This. Thank you. The That's the thing. Like, photographers are either conceptually based or technically based. And it's very, very, very few who can bridge the gap between the two. Um, and, you know, there are times I see photographers, I think Catherine was talking about this earlier, you like wow the concept is awesome um or, or tamara you may have said it but you know you you blew the execution of it right. and then there are a lot of photographers are very technical and they'll show you their pictures and they're they're perfect to the tenth <laughs> of an f-stop you know but they're the most boring lifeless photographs you've right. ever seen in your life you never <laughs> want to see them again yeah. but technically that's true technically they're good and i'm definitely in the technical mindset and so the technical comes easy for me and oh okay that's you know aperture shutter speed iso got it um and, but you ask me about an idea or a concept or i'm going to photograph something on my timeline of my life and i'm just gonna um i'm gonna go find shiny things because right. um, <laughs> i i don't know so i have to surround myself with the conceptual creative people um and they help me with my ideas and help me develop ideas and then and i see the conceptual people need to surround themselves with the technical people to help them technically pull it off mm. um and i think right now you're you're doing a good job of both how did you um, said you didn't study this robbie how did you learn how to do this i mean the technical side of photography is something that's really difficult for me yeah. like i i've always had that creative mindset but um when I came with photography, it was difficult because I didn't know anything. I'm all self-taught. Like, I had I had a camera. It looked like a fake DSLR. It was like the lens was like attached, and I couldn't take it off. It was like a Fuji. I can't even remember. But um, it, it, I I spent a lot of my time just sitting with the camera, changing this number, seeing what that number does, changing this number, wow, seeing what that number does. If I change this number, it gets like blurrier in the back if right. I change this I can see more clear but then if I change this it gets overexposed if I change this it gets underexposed so it was just all self-taught I mean I use natural light with all of my photo shoots because I just you I'm haven't taught yourself lighting yeah I don't know yeah I don't know I mean I, I feel like if I feel like if I want to take that direction I thought okay mastering mastering you can never master but like going the natural light direction if I could understand that then I could understand lighting better like studio lighting better but yeah. again i'm not really familiar with the technical side so it's all stuff that i had to work with so you brought your camera here that you yes. shoot with yes i so minimalist approach with you yes yeah. i this is this is all i this is all i use i use a canon 5d and it, this has been severely loved there's a lot of marks on it and <laughs> this is a lens that i bought used when i first started doing photography and the focus ring is actually like very much screwed in very tight so it's very difficult to turn <laughs> but it has a lot of character Honestly. and I appreciate that so so you're not using a zoom this is oh, just yeah, this is a 50 millimeter one four yeah I mean I use 50 millimeter 95 percent of the time 99.9 yeah. percent and this goes with what Zach was talking about not when you're first getting started when his episode we discussed this not investing so much gear and going in debt when yeah, look that at was what something you can I was do. afraid of. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's not just going in debt; it's also overwhelming yourself with oh, too many yeah, tools. Definitely, that I'm not aware of. Especially yeah. if you're learning yeah, trial and error like this. I think one tool yeah. is probably a good. A good yeah. Well, and it goes back to what we were talking about with getting the eighty-five-one-two. I didn't get the eighty-five-one-two for a long time, and by the time I got it, I could truly appreciate right. it. Or yeah. if I gotten it earlier, I just wouldn't have quite got it why it was so special. Right. So yeah, the eighty-five is a great lens. <laughs> Yeah, I, Tamara made me buy the 8512. Zach made <laughs> yeah. me buy the X100. This is Leo's most expensive show. I'm a crappy photographer, but boy, do I have the gear, I'll tell you. <laughs> you know, can I uh, mention one thing to Robbie? When uh, Talking about the um, when you get undressed and take pictures of yourself in people's beds. 
Um, yeah. Which I love, by the way. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Not many people understand. So. <laughs> I um, the, uh, <laughs> the idea of um, building out your portfolio, one of the things, and Zach mentioned this earlier, one of the things that stuck was that you didn't have anything in there that took away from the rest of it. Mm. Um, I think as you progress through your career, it'll be interesting to note um, if this becomes your defining style and, and um, as you get bigger and bigger, um, it'll be interesting to note how quickly, if you can step back and look at your work, how quickly work that you created and was original then becomes copycatted mm. and you can look back a few years later and people may look at your work and other people's work and not know which was original which is what <laughs> was like your derivative of yourself yes. <laughs> I've had that before that and that does happen it happens consistently and one of the biggest things i've seen with photographers who have been around a long time and very successful is they don't really keep a fresh eye on that and no longer recognize yeah. that their work doesn't seem inspired anymore simply even though they're doing inspiring work everybody else is doing it too so you no longer become the original is that what, what you're saying yeah. correct yeah. yeah it's like the Alfred Hitchcock like when you, know, you see Alfred Hitchcock if you've never seen it you see it for the first time you're like I don't know what the big deal is you know yeah. I've seen this a million times well I think of somebody like uh, in another uh, venue Madonna who had, who reinvented herself reinvented many herself many many times, so many times. Yeah. and had to and Lady Gaga is going to face that same issue where she starts to look like a parody of herself, you have to continually reinvent, as an artist in any field, reinvent yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Yeah, you can, uh, you know, to just bounce off of that, you can get pigeonholed that look where we want you for that look, we right. want you for that look. We want the it's, Robbie Cavanaugh look. And, yeah. yeah. Right. And <laughs> then, day. you know, but what will happen is Robbie Cavanaugh is going to hate the Robbie Cavanaugh look. Yeah. Like you're, <laughs> if you shoot one more stinking picture of some girl in a field with some shit on fire, you're going to throw up. I'm so sick know. of this. No more umbrellas. <laughs> so, That's something I totally yeah, don't understand right now. Exactly. That's exactly it. You go it. to do something new and different and everyone's like, yeah, but we want that old thing that you did. Um, oh. It's tough, you know, and I definitely don't have anywhere near of a specific individual look that I deal with that. But there are certain pictures that I always shoot that I kind of say, you know, I always shoot this stupid picture on a photo shoot. And to me, it's stupid. To me, I'm over it. To me, I've shot it. So I, then I don't do it. And then I deliver the edit. And then they're like, hey, but where's that that shot you do? Like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Right tomorrow night and I'll do the shot, uh. you know. That is the worst thing, isn't it? But, you know, I think it helps to be uh, ADD and helps to be easily bored. And and the the ruminizer just mentioned this in the chat room, that David Bowie uh, reinvented himself. Many There were many, many David Bowies. And I once heard an interview in which he said, I only, I, I'm a, theater, a theatrical performer. I only want to do everything once. I never want to do the same thing again. And it takes a very special person to be able to do that. The, the, most of us, if we find a niche... I keep doing the same show over and over and over again. We just keep doing it. And so, yeah. uh, uh, but uh, the real challenge as an artist is to continue to grow and change. And do you think that's going to be difficult for you, Rami? Yeah. I mean, I think it will. I mean, as I started off with photography, you always look at people and you're like, oh, this works interesting. Like, you always look up to certain people. But in the end, like, it's it should always be about you and the work that you want to create. So I feel like a lot of emerging photographers may copy too much of a photo similar. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's where the problem in Tamara, how do you keep fresh? Um, well, I find that uh, a lot of the work I'm shooting, um, I show very little of it because um, I don't want to keep, if, if I have shot something that a family loves and, you know, it's great for my business and um, I sell it well, I, sometimes it ends up being a body of work that um, is not fresh, but is extremely satisfying to the client. Right. And that's kind of that differentiation. Where are you fresh and where, you know... Are you so fresh that nobody buys it? <laughs> That's true. You, know, you are in a commercial it. enterprise. It is not this. I mean, unless you're going to just do this for yourself and nobody yeah. else, you got to consider yeah. the client. And when I talk to Camera, people who ask, like, what do you do? <laughs> when I talk to people who ask, like, um, well, what do you do when the client wants you to shoot this and you hate this? I'm like, you shoot it, you deliver it, you let them buy it, and then you shoot what you love and uh, show that. Good. Like that. That's good advice. Yeah. We have another uh, winner, our runner-up, uh, Helen. I hope I'm saying this right, Soteriitis. Yeah, I think and, so. And uh, Helen uh, did some wonderful work, too. Do we want to yes. run quickly yeah, through let's go. some of her? I'd love to get you guys, if you wouldn't mind, Helen has graciously Ooh. offered to allow us to critique her portfolio. She's um, not with us. She's home watching. She's home watching, yeah. She's got her tissue box right 
right there. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a architectural work then, for the most part. No, no variety. That's beautiful. No. So uh, Zach, your thoughts? Um, okay, so this uh, this kind of you know, and I always have to get rules of technique, uh, rules of critique down. Don't take it personal. Um, you know, this is to help you grow. Um, and where you are today is hopefully not where you are ten years from now. Um, but this is kind of a portfolio that's indicative of I started going through it and I'm like, oh, that's a, not a bad picture. And that's kind of nice. And that, but there's no defining uh, style. There's no defining post-production technique. There's no defining. I, I don't know who Helen is as a photographer. Um, and, you know, when I. I went back to the, the Twit Photo Contest and it said, we're looking for the hottest emerging photographers. I kind of said, okay, there's that, uh, am I going to pin that title on X, Y, or Z or A, B, or C photographer? Um, and all of this work is, is stuff I've seen before. Uh, let's take a look. I, I'm looking at it in Bridge. Um, or you know, I'm, I've pulled up the thumbnails, the portfolio on my computer that I'm looking at. Oh, okay, here's a picture right there that's on uh, the Twit cast, the the shot glass on the bar. And yeah, okay, it's a picture of a glass on a bar. Um, it's not the greatest picture of a glass on a bar that the world's ever seen. And if you're going to approach a a uh, subject like, oh, I'm going to take this picture of this shot glass on a bar. What needs to drop into your mind is you need to realize that photograph has been made one million times. And it's now your job to take the greatest <laughs> shot, you know, picture of a drink on a bar the world has ever seen. It has got to be the most stellar, unbelievable, and light composition, color, contract. Like, you have to do something with this glass on a bar. Now, are you? No, but but that's what you have to do. And if right. this is what you create, you go, well, you know what? I just created the millionth and first picture of a glass on a bar. And it doesn't go in your portfolio. Uh, the picture of the moon through the clouds. Seen it, seen it, seen it. The picture right. of the shallow depth field of the fork. The dandelion. Um, uh, Ooh, go back. The, I like the, that. Go back to that drop. What did you think of that, Zach? Yeah, because of the reflection of the uh, photographer <sighs> in there. I mean, it's I all technically know. quite proficient. Yeah, technically, and that's why you know she ranked high up up there. Is technically everything was proficient, but why there, there wasn't a placing for me at least as a judge? Uh, it was the lack of of personal style, personal vision. Um, and, Consistent. you know, I mean, it's kind of a cool shot, but it's... None of them I'm, tell a story? Does that have anything to do with it? Uh, maybe. There's not a lot of point of view. I know what you're... I completely understand what you're right. saying. Yeah. And if you look, if you just take a look at the thumbnails, the post-production is inconsistent. Um, uh, it, it, Somebody said know, in the chat room, a flicker star. And this is exactly what I, it's kind of, I kind of agree. I know it, I know it. Yeah, does, does, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. To you? Like, this is yeah. something you'd see on Flickr and you'd look at it as a body of work and say, well, great stuff. But it, but it isn't art. But so I. Poor Helen. I'm I so see, sorry, Helen. No, but I see <laughs> images. We love it. It's good stuff. But, yeah. but, but I, if we're not honest, then, then <laughs> what the hell are we doing here? Right. You know? Right. I have to be honest. And, you know, Robbie, good job. Like, consistent work. But you're one out of the however many hundreds that submitted that didn't stand out in the crowd. Yeah. And, you know, we're all there. I mean, you know, you can go look at my work and tear it apart. And I just nod my head and go, geez, you're freaking right. Yeah, I need to get rid of that and that and that and that. Um, we have to be honest. We have to be able to say it. How about you, Tamara? Your, your thoughts? Yeah, um, a couple of things. One, I, I understand. I think that's the biggest issue is we didn't see consistency. We didn't know who the photographer was. I absolutely agree with that. Um, however, if you look at some of these individual images, some of them are good and could be great with yeah. a few adjustments. I mean, I really saw more than anything in this portfolio um, some issues with cropping. 
um, and shading that um, if those had been, or maybe, maybe even rotation, if we had seen a few adjustments like that, those images that were like pretty good could have been outstanding. And, um, and sometimes when you look at a whole body of work, it's obviously the, if, if, are you judging the whole body of work? Are you judging individual images? Are you looking to see how can we improve these images? Um, I, I prefer to um, say, okay, let's pull a few out that, gosh, if you did this, this, and this, can you see the difference? Um, and for right now, of course, since the images have already been shot, this, this, and this is all going to take is all going to take place in post. Um, however, now that you've done it in post and you see what you could be looking for, hopefully you go forward and shoot differently. Mm -hmm. um, so, like as a body of work, yes, there, you, we are missing that voice, that voice, that narrative that takes us the whole way through. Um, but some individuals, do, some individual images, like you know, for instance, the one right now that we're on with the boat and the um, stars and such. Um, I'm thinking that um, one of the first things that strike me, and tell me if you guys jump in, has to do with um, some distortion of uh, the shot. And in post, you can do some correcting of that if you wanted to, like the way the boat's kind of leaning and the angle, and we kind of have a horizon line and it dips up. To me, it'd be interesting to kind of knock this apart and make little shifts and see what you could do with it and shoot a little differently next time. I think the yeah. the editing too, coming down to what uh, shots you include. Yeah, I, I really, I mean, that's my yeah. biggest. I, I believe, and I'm such a proponent of critiques and judging, and that's why every year I judge at w, WPPI and is try to be as involved as I can, because I've learned so much by having people rip me apart, and yeah. and yeah. it sucks during it. Oof. You know, it sucks during it, but that's that's part of growing. Like, and my work was definitely like that where it looked like a just there was no message there's no right. vision and i think um i see a lot of beautiful images in her portfolio and i feel like if, if finding that voice finding that vision finding that sort of message you want to give to the world and taking out the noise that's detracting from it yeah yeah and the idea of, of vision ties into the, like um you know when people say you know, okay so what's my vision or what's my voice it that, that's a whole exercise in and of itself that I think can take your career just to the next level if you take the time to figure it out. I think people have a hard time saying, too, that, like, as a photographer, you, you have to be technically sound, but you're, you're, an art, you're an artist with a camera. And I think some people just focus on the technicalities than why they picked up the camera in the first place. I just want to take a pretty picture. <laughs> well, well, we should we should tell. We're going we to talk about prizes and uh, yes, and tips yes. as well in just a little bit. But we're, we're running out of time because we because of technical issues, we're running a little long. So we're going to oh, yeah. try to get through the uh, the commercial and uh, get your tips and then get your prizes in. Yeah. And I'm so glad that Tamara Lackey and Zach Arias can be here. Uh, two of the top photographers in the and world. And I want to just you guys to give two really fast. You don't get out a lot, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> We're really thrilled to have you. I would love for you guys to just to give Camera, maybe, you know I mean? <laughs> two quick tips on um, entering contests. Period. Just general for people for the next guest quest. That so, we under, so we understand really what Camera this process first. is about. Yeah. It's not about. It, 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 there is a reason to do this that is much that really transcends any. It's about becoming a better photographer. Yes. So we'll talk yeah. about that in a sec. Uh, but first, I want to mention to you, if you have a closet or a drawer full of old gadgets, cameras, lenses, iPods, MacBooks, telephones that you're not using, you know what? They could be worth a lot of money. Sure, you could go on eBay and sell them yourself or don't sell it. Gazelle it. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E dot com. They will buy your used gadgets. They'll give you cash or, and I think this is an even better deal, you can get an Amazon credit. Uh, Walmart credit, PayPal, cash. There's actually a whole bunch of ways you get paid. The reason I mentioned the Amazon is you get 5% bonus on top of the value. Go to gazelle.com. This is a, this actually is a fun thing to do. Get a box, any old cardboard box, and then go to gazelle.com and start entering in um, stuff. The Canon, let's see, I want to get the new X1. I got to, I got to, let me take my old power shot. Why don't you sell G12. that? G12. I'm going to sell that sucker. Let's see. Uh, see how much money I can get for that that puppy. Did you really buy the G12? No, I didn't. Thank goodness. <laughs> I don't need another camera. Uh, I, I, I'm, you know what? If you saw my shelf, my camera shelf, it's a lot of cameras. It this would save me 168 bucks. Boom! Put it in the box, and again and again and again, add that stuff to the box. You, they send, they ship it. 
If it's stuff that can't be sold, it has no value, they will recycle it responsibly. No landfill, no offshore. They take care of this stuff. If there's data on it, they'll wipe the data for you. It is just a great service, and you get a check, or you get a money order, or you get a PayPal, or better yet, you get an Amazon gift card with 5% additional on it. And it's all so easy to do. This is fun. Keep it moving. Move it on. Don't waste time either because I'll tell you what, if you do this tomorrow, all of those gadgets are just a little bit worth a little bit less every single day. So, Or they're just no longer worth anything. At some point. They're it's just not, recyclable. Yeah, do it at now. That point. Don't waste any time. Gazelle.com. Try it out today. It's really fun. I mean, it's it a good fun. feeling. You get all that stuff out of your house and they give you money for it. They pay you to clean up. I love it. G A Z E L L E dot com. If you're in a, a nonprofit, they also have gadget drives or lots of things. Go there and find out more about it. I'm looking at all the great people Tamara gets on her Redefine show. Wow, Tamara, this is so. How often do you do this? Uh, we every two weeks. Wow, look, you're good. Cool. Edie Falco, did you do that already? Yeah, well, actually, we haven't released yet. We filmed oh, that. Most I love of these her. we filmed, um, we do a big chunk of them. So we'll do a run where we visit like. And interview five or six people, and then we release them every Smart. two weeks. Miss Catherine's coming out. That's great. Paula Poundstone, love her. She made me cry in mine. Can you believe did you, that? Did you cry? <laughs> Tamara. <laughs> Get the tissues. Did you really cry? Yeah, I cried. Did she Tamara ask you like a Barbara Walters you. type question? Yeah, like she did. She's a great Walters. interviewer. Wow. I'm going to watch that. I want to see you cry. I see them chopped onions. <laughs> <laughs> I just the water on. Redefineshow.com if you want to know uh, And Tamara also that. just came out with a book, too. Which is very cool. All right. So, anyhow, tips. Should we launch into the tips? Let's launch yes. into uh, tips. Robbie's tips. This is a tradition on Twit Photo. We ask every photographer to give us some three tips, and, and if possible, illustrate the tips. Give us an idea of, of uh, what it means. Tip number one is perfect for you, Robbie. Yeah, I'm very, very passionate about this tip. Um, if you can think it, it can be done. Yes. No. I'm very passionate about this tip because I feel like a lot of photographers are very much afraid of failing and they're very much um, not willing to take the risk. They may have an idea in their head that they're really passionate about and they're like, this is so great, but, you know, it's too much money, but I don't have the location. But, but I might catch on fire. Yeah, there's a lot of ifs and buts that people throw out and I really think that if you have an idea that you're happy about, do it. Like, what's That's the awesome. worst thing that can happen? You fail, but then you're one step closer. Or to your succeeding. model explodes into flames. But or, no, yeah, if she you're gets careful. In. Be careful. <laughs> so, yeah. um, this is a photo, a little behind the scenes of how I did it. That's my dad. And oh, that's we great. drove up to the desert, and um, this is an idea I had in my head for a while, and Love it. Um, I didn't quite know how to do it, so as I said earlier, I put black construction paper to the bends of the umbrella, and that's what actually burned. And you must enjoy the experimentation, too. That must be part of it for you. The experimentation is fun. The yeah. day of the shoot is actually incredibly, incredibly stressful, because I maybe do a month of planning, and right. I don't it's know how it's it going to turn out. Like and you have supportive parents, and I love that. Yes. You must Obviously. be exhausted through yeah. this process. Yes, I'm very, very tired. I'm very, very tired. I'm, I was that dedicated. I, yeah, <laughs> I'm very nervous. Um, but I'm always happy. I mean, You're I driven, not, though, aren't you? You have to do this. Yeah, I have a feeling. I have to do this. Yeah, I, ha I mean, it's something I need to do. Yeah. And it's. I mean, if I if it doesn't come out exactly how I wanted it to be, like the photo I envisioned. I'll always come out with something that is different that I may not have expected that I still enjoy. Good, but I feel like every photographer should just go out and try and not worry about. The fa I'm worried about failing. They just okay. need to do it. That's good. Tip two, be vulnerable and honest. And you, we've seen that here today. Be vulnerable and honest with your work. Yeah. And as I said earlier, like as a photographer, I do feel like you are an artist and you do, you should have like a sense of vision or style. And when I mean like be vulnerable and honest with your work, just don't be afraid to um, maybe share something that's personal with you and put it into a photo and share it with the world. Just you don't have to tell them what it means. Yeah, ex I mean, exactly. I mean, and that's and that's always the best work because it's right. something that you're passionate about. And if, right. it's, if it's something you're really passionate about creating, you're going to be more, you know, more proud of it, and it, it could turn out better than most. So I think you need to go in that direction and just create work for you and what you're passionate about doing. And finally, you you did you did tip this a little bit, but but it, worth repeating. Photoshop is not a dirty word, but it can be. Yes. So again, earlier, I, I summed it up. I believe Photoshop should be used solely just to enhance your work, not create. So I'm very against um, taking a picture of something, taking another picture of something, and taking another picture, and then creating a scene saying, right. oh, this is a photo I took. I'm a photographer. And I think you just really lose sight of why you took the camera in the first place. And I think it's something that 
you need to look back on and be, you know, why did I do photography? You know, it's it's a form of manipulation. And I, I think if you work hard, because you can get that same shot, you just may have to drive two hours to that location. I mean, I feel if Photoshop should be used just to enhance, but it shouldn't be used to completely create work that didn't exist. And we already know that you love the Canon uh, 1.450 millimeter, but love you also music. listen to music while you work. Portable music player is key, <laughs> and not even for myself. Like I don't even have a headset when I do it. It's like a little, like a little iHome or like a little just a, something a that little the, dock. so the model can hear it. Too. Yes, so it just kind of relaxes the nerves for me because I'm always very tense on the day. What do you listen I, to? Um, for creative work, I like to listen to piano music and Florence and the Machine. I'm a big <laughs> fan. Um, any work that kind of pumps the creative juices and makes me think. And so I'll play that kind of in the background just to keep it mellow and makes me relax, makes my model relax. And so I'm very, very big on that. It's always a lot of fun. Zach, do you do that too? Yeah, but it's hip hop. I knew it. <laughs> he I looks can't like. I play piano music. <laughs> yeah, I, I, before a client walks in the door or I'm driving to a shoot, it's like just hip hop. Or uh, I'm the dubstep lately. I've been listening. And I, I think it's. Um, I think it's string theory. I think it's I, my own personal thing is that my brain resonates. And I, if I hear something mm. that has a very repetitive pattern, mm. it allows me to think. Otherwise, I'm such a scatterbrain that I can't keep a single thought going on for more than 30 seconds. And um, So hip-hop and dubstep. But yeah, music is key. Music is very important yeah. um, to have a good library of it on hand. Yes. Robbie's uh, website is Robbie Cavanaugh, C-A-V-A-N-A-U-G-H dot com. And uh, let's not forget to give Helen a plug to Helen Sotriadis. Sotriadis' uh, website is uh, Helen Sotriadis. And for Helen um, and for Zach. We've got some nice yeah, prizes. For Robbie. I'm so excited. So we'll start <laughs> off. This is Trey, what Trey gave you. It's yeah. not. Is it, is it, it won't be this photo. Is it plugged in? It's not plugged in. Oh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's plug it in because it, it lights <laughs> it up. Loses, what is this? It, it loses <laughs> what its this? effect. Well, should I not this look? is from yeah. Backlit Box. I guess they didn't plug it in. But it, 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 it inside, it's lit up. This is, uh, there's somebody somebody sneaking in to plug it in. Uh, this is a picture Trey took of the oh, wow. uh, last shuttle launch. Oh, but the, when my it lights gosh. up. Now, I can imagine. I think your photos in a, in one of these backlit boxes would be actually well, pretty we, cool. We will find out. Yeah, where backlit know. box is generously going to create, oh, I don't know what size. Here, I, they made it dark. They're, gonna, they're giving you and Helen um, a backlit box. A backlit Are you box. serious? Yes, you can send your image in. So you can do what Tamara said. You're going to see your image. Blow it up large. Yes. Oh, my gosh. And, and backlit so is in the uh, chat room. And he says 16 by 24 for you, Robbie. Oh, thank you. Oh, my gosh. That's yeah. great. Yeah. And then 8 <laughs> by 12 Helen, for uh, Helen. 8 by 12, a little bit smaller. Yeah. Thank you, backlit box. Wow. Back yeah. Lit and they have the box. promo cool. going on Twit Photo still. So okay. for people that want to go there. It looks beautiful. You know, I have this on a... Um, uh, a sensor, so when I walk in the room, it lights oh, up to greet me. Cool. Isn't that cool? That's, that's very yeah. cool. I should do that. Yeah. <laughs> I wanna... uh, you just give me wow. ideas every session, every time. <laughs> and then also, I spend money every time. We have we always we talk about <laughs> <laughs> Nick Software a lot. I um, love their stuff. Nick Software. Have you used the color effects? I have it. I've no. used the silver effects. Not familiar. So we Zach and Tamara, we talked about style and evolving. Perfect and, for him. And right. Color effects yeah. is. I use it on all my images. They're oh, filters, and um, this is. They're going to send you this. So you can start oh playing gosh. and and doing different stuff with your images. <laughs> Thank you so much. Very it's nice. So cool. Very nice. And then low yes, pro. Start with the shadow slider and move it to the right. <laughs> <laughs> use just, this to add just contrast. for you, Zach. Just yeah. for you. Yeah. <laughs> just just once. Try it. I will. No, totally. Live on the edge. <laughs> <laughs> And this is a great thing to have, actually. I have one of these myself. I hope you're ready for another bag. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you need Finally, a bigger have you, bag. Have you seen my bag? Yeah, it's a little small. This is, this is my bag. It's, yeah. it's been... It's just uh, tiny. It's this is it. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. You're going to you like this. So these yeah, are great. So these low the, pros are fantastic. The flip side 400 AW from yeah. low pro. And it, oh it zips gosh. from the back. So if you can travel and your stuff's secure... Nobody's going to sneak I in and steal bag. a lens it's from amazing. behind. Yeah. Because it's inside. See? Look at that. Isn't that clever? Clever, clever. So a couple gifts. Yeah, thank you. I mean, just being Surprise here was gifts. great enough for me. Well, so, and, and thank thanks, you. thanks to our uh, so Leo, partners. So, Leo, you were wrong when you said we're not box. giving you anything. Yeah, you, you, well, I <laughs> just your want, presence. I didn't want him to count on it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Robbie Cavanaugh Photography is on Facebook. Robbie Cavanaugh. Yes. And, yes, of course he's on Google+. Plus. How could you not be on Google+, Plus these days, if you're a photographer? Yep. Telling stories, creating dreams, and seeing life through express. <laughs> 
And uh, <laughs> no, fill in the blank. Thing. Fill in the blank. I'm going to add you to my photography circle awesome. right now. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Boom. Boom. Uh, one thing, Robbie. <laughs> yes. Uh, being on your website, uh, I have no idea where you are. Oh, okay. Do you want to get work out of this or do you page? not care? <laughs> Got you. Be, you know, hey, well, let me see if I hire you. But wait, where are you? I don't even yeah. know where you are. I don't, yeah. I, I don't. Are you in my town? Or just because you have a 909 area code, that doesn't mean anything anymore with cell phones bouncing true. from state to state. Um, where are you based? Uh, Rancho Cucamonga. So the Inland Empire. Southern California. Oh, Southern California. Oh, yeah. Southern California. <laughs> <laughs> Little LA area. Before we forget, oh, you guys, God. will you give us your two, a couple tips for the next guest quest entry, entrance? Yes. How could somebody else win this? How can we win? Um, yeah. I can I can give you two tips, and then I got to go because I'm being called for dinner. I know. Um, I could tell the lighting is changing. Uh, <laughs> I, I, worked, <laughs> I worked for uh, the Atlanta Photojournalism Seminar for 10 years working with their contest. So I've seen contests from behind the scenes. Number one, don't shoot for contests uh, number one like that if you shoot for contests if you watch contests you say "Ooh, this is kind of winning wppi this year i'm going to shoot this next year guess what you're a year behind and number two is it's totally subjective and i have sat in contests where one year the group of judges totally threw a kind of photography out or a style or a look mm -hmm. threw it out and the next year, it's a whole new set of judges, and they love that kind of style. They like that kind of look. And so stuff that would have lost last year placed the next year and vice versa. Um, and you never know. Um, I, I, have, I used to be the guy that had to crack the whip on the judges saying, hurry up, make a decision. And there could be a photographer fighting for your work, wants it first place, but the two other trump them in vote. And you end up getting an honorable mention um, because of a negotiation of, okay, I'll let this be first place, but you have to give this one second place. Um, it's, it's weird like that. So don't ever shoot for contests. They don't, you know, shoot for you. Um, I'm sure Robbie was not going out going, okay, now let me go make some pictures so I can win a contest. And let's right. see if I go win contests. Um, Robbie goes and shoots pictures, and then he goes, oh, well, I'll enter my stuff in this contest. And then, hey, look, he won. So there you go. That's my tips. Tamara, your tips for contesting? <laughs> um, you know, I think I've done a lot of judging, just like Catherine. And um, one of the things you recognize sitting on a panel is um, so if you see four images in a row that are somewhat similar, even though... Um, they may all stand out from everything else in the pack. By the time you get to the fourth image, everyone's like, meh, seen it three times in a row just now. Yeah. Um, just realize so much of it is luck of the draw, literally which image is drawn when. <laughs> and, um, and also the background and the um, aesthetics of the people judging. So you might have the best work out there and um, just get a ter no voting or a, a terrible ranking simply because it didn't jive with the people who were judging you. So first and foremost, I would say look around at various contests. Don't just enter one and say, oh, I suck, I'll never do this. Um, you don't necessarily suck, maybe the panel sucks. Um, so think about the fact that you should show your work in a variety of places to get a very fair representation. And if you put yourself out to three or four places and they all say you suck, well then maybe there's something to that. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, and the second thing I would say is, um, and I can't uh, emphasize this enough, is um, you can't lose sight of what you really, really, really care about. And if you're showing something that you really, really care about, it will stand out. It will be head and shoulders above the rest. And that should be only what you show. And don't just put a bunch of other stock stuff in there because you want to pad the judging. Show your passion. Show your passion, not your passion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like it. Guys, I hate to just bounce, but we got to, I got to. Thanks, Zacharias. Zacharias.com. Zach Thank Everybody you so should much check it out. And, he started with uh, a white sheet, and now he has a gray sheet. I know. Behind. It's dinner time. <laughs> Even the sheet wants to go. <laughs> Thank you, Zach. Uh, Robbie, I, uh, hopefully if I'm ever in the L.A. area, I'd like to look you up and uh, take you out for a cup of coffee. Or if you're ever in Atlanta, uh, you're welcome here at our place whenever. Isn't but really nice? great job. That would stuff. be amazing. Uh, <laughs> camera as well. And everyone, uh, Leo, Catherine, thank you very much. 
Um, but I got to go. Thanks. Thanks. Take care, Bye. Zach. Bye. Thank you. Tamara Lackey, thank you so much for being yeah. here. Thank we really you. appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Congratulations, right. Robbie. You're fantastic. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and our, and our photographer, our Twitch photo Helen guest and, quest winner. And Ravi both. Yes. For, and to all the people who entered. For everyone who entered. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah. Next, and next, you'll be more prepared. So for the next one. It's going to be an annual thing. We right, invite Leo? you to. It is. Well, oh, that's it's cool. up to you. Oh, it's your show. I to do all the work. Yeah, <laughs> I just sit here. <laughs> NLE.no is the place to go to find out about the Nordic Light Festival. Catherine and I will be going, thanks to Mikkel Oland, to see some of the best photographers and in the world. Are you not amazed by the image? I mean, the photographers that are going to be there. Wonderful photographers. I'm just blown away. And, I'm so excited. Uh, and so, what's exciting is that we're going to take Twit Photo there and shoot. And have a great time doing it, and uh, you will get to see the results uh, in May. Uh, if you want, if you're in the area or you would like to go to the area, uh, you can find out more at nle. No. Go to the area, right, yeah. Leo? Yeah, go. it's Christiansund in Norway, and they sent us a picture, Beautiful. and it looks gorgeous. I cannot wait. It's going to be so much I haven't fun. Seen it yet, but also. We have to talk. Trey, did you see Trey's show last night? It's about, he interviewed the author. He says, you have to read his book, Patrick okay. Rothfuss. So, so Trey Ratcliffe is also doing a photo show on the Twit Network. It's his Google Hang Plus Hangouts he's been doing for yeah. a while. You so were he on? He, well, last, this episode, he did an interview with Patrick Rothfuss. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. So about art and writing. So it's a great show. So we're making that a podcast. It'll yes. be at twit.tv. So it's Trey's Variety Hour. Look for that. That will be downloadable. Yeah, and, and then next, next week, week is going to be... Very, very exciting. Ooh. We're having Jerry's Jonas in, in studio, and he's actually going to be doing a shoot. I don't so, mind taking my clothes off stuff. for an artistic <laughs> purpose. <laughs> there has to, it has to be artistic. So I'm ready. And uh, Jerry, come We're on. We're trying to get tasteful, people to watch, tasteful Leo. <laughs> tasteful nudity. Get me a bed, a sheet, and a gallon of peanut oil. I am ready. Oh, my gosh. gosh. No, I'm just kidding. We don't. What is he going to shoot? What kind of shoot is it going to be? I don't know. Well, we'll find out. We will find out. I'm excited. Thank but you. But he is going to show us his new light, which I'm super excited to see. It's not even on the market yet. So. Oh, the pen light. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very excited. And then about we that. may get the D hundred eight hundred review, maybe. Oh, we were going to get that in today. With the news just came out about Nikon's new camera, it sounds fantastic. You know what we yeah. got to do is just get one, and we'll show you. How about uh, that? That sounds good. Yes. Maybe we'll bring it to Norway because <laughs> we're going to shoot video. You know, on our on our. Yeah, I, I got to stick Canon. We're gonna the shoot, cannons just got to catch up now. We're going to shoot vi beautiful video on our. We're going to shoot Guy Lafleur quality video of Norway. All right. You, not me. Thank you for joining. <laughs> we do this show every Tuesday. You know, it kind of depends on how the technical stuff works, but we try. We shoot for 1.30 p.m. Pacific, 3.30, 4.30 Eastern on uh, twit.tv. But you can always go and download the shows, and there are a great bunch of them now. We have, this is what, episode 43, so there's 42 fantastic shows if you've missed any one of them, go back and look at them because they're all great. TWIT.TV. Catherine Hall is at CatherineHall.net. Follow her blog. Follow her photography. Hire her. Be nice to her. Send <laughs> me her money. candy. Anything. <laughs> Send me gifts. No, Congratulations once again. Robbie Cavanaugh, well done. Thank great. You. Really yeah. great work. Thank you. Really enjoyed it. A round of applause. Wow, Let's make you, you red. <laughs> yeah, I know. make you red towards I'm the end of the show. Today, thanks, so. Tamara. <laughs> thanks to uh, Zach. Thanks to Robbie. Thanks to you for joining us. We'll see you next thanks, time. Thanks, Tamara. Thank you, Tamara. Twit photo.